Welcome back everybody, this is Eric and Chad here with IRAC Veteran 8888. Today we've got another gun gripe episode for you, and boys, it is a doozy. And girls. And girls. We're going to get into it, it's SB7, uh, Rubio is up to his old tricks again, we're going to talk <laughs> about it a little bit. I want to give a special thanks to Sonoran Desert Institute uh, for making sure that we can continue making these gun gripes for you guys, unfiltered, unadulterated, in your face, in your soul, in your, in your little minds here. Uh, they're a wonderful group of guys. If you need any higher education related to firearms technology, gunsmithing, SDI is definitely a group of people you need to look into. I know a lot of us have GI Bill that's unused. You know who you are. They accept GI Bill. Look them up. They're good people. They'll take care of you. Uh, so let's talk about this a little bit. So, <laughs> well, to, so talk, <laughs> to talk about this, you need to go back a little bit in history. All so right. a little while back, we did a gun gripe on the Maryland state red flag laws. HB you know, 1302. 1302. And then we also mentioned in that video that there had been a national bill introduced in the House. Okay, that was introduced back in like September of 2018. It never really went anywhere, okay? But now the Senate's introduced their version and now we're in a, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're in kind of a new phase with this, you know, lame duck session starting. You know, you have Democrats controlling the House, Republicans still controlling the Senate, which doesn't usually get anything done, but I mean, I mean, with one party controlling the House and the Senate for the past two years, didn't get anything done either. So, I don't know. But anyways, this is a very dangerous precedent, and there's already been casualties from these laws in Maryland. And in case you don't know, we're discussing red flag laws. Now, we've already done a video on a couple of different red flag laws, and... Uh, and they're dangers, <coughs> and they, they have a clear and present danger. Uh, this is related to SB7. Mm -hmm. Now, the actual text of the proposed bill legislation has not even really been put on Congress.gov yet. Uh, all it really has had is just a minor update, giving a brief summary, and that the wording is not even there yet. It says delays can <coughs> occur, large number of bills to prepare, or when a very large bill has to be printed, so... Oh, wait a minute. The government shut down, so nobody's there to <laughs> write them out. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> no, they're still working. I forgot Congress is still being paid. Ha! Oh, who would have known? Right. Who would have known? But uh, what yeah. I can assume is that the bill for the Senate is probably going to be closely uh, linked to the House bill that was introduced last year. So here's, here's where the scary part is with this. I mean, not only are red flag laws really dangerous, as we discussed in previous videos, but the NRA is actually supporting this bill. This bill has bipartisan support from the Democrats and the Republicans, and this was actually submitted by a Republican in Florida, Senator Marco Ru Rubio. Yeah, Marco Rubio. That Marco R, Rubio. R means rhino. Rhino, right. Rhino. Right. Republican yeah, and name gotcha. Only. Yeah, not yeah. a Republican. But the thing is, red flag laws have already taken place and are settled into Florida's laws. Uh, I think 450 people have lost their gun rights due to red flag laws, and mm. it sets some really dangerous things in motion. Oh. So, you if, know, if uh, you don't know what a red flag law, what we're doing, what we're talking about is basically gun confiscation laws. If someone close to you, mainly a family member, says, you know, I don't know if he is safe or what, because he's kind of scaring me, some of the things he's said, some of the things that he's done, some of the things he's posted on social media, lead me to believe that he could probably harm himself or others. Uh, hi, Mr. Police Officer, can you uh, go and check this guy out? Because something's crazy. They can file an order, a judge can sign it, and then the cops go to that person's house and they confiscate their guns. And they hold their firearms until they go through this long judicial process to prove themselves innocent and uh, get their gun rights back. Remember when Trump said, take the guns first, due process second? Yeah. Wrong answer. That's not how due process works. <clears throat> that is not due process. <laughs> That's not how it works. It's not the first So, so what, does the said. ATF come in your house, shoot your dog, take your bump stock away, and then what, a few months later, or however long it takes, we get over this whole bump stock uh, shenanigans that's going on, and then they end up going, oh, well, we were wrong, sorry. Sorry we and shot your dog. They, they lost half your guns. Yeah, so, sorry we shot your dog, man. Or yeah, yeah, or how, your, your guns wind up in some evidence locker somewhere or in some lockup somewhere, and it winds up, you know, you get them back in their arrest bucket. Or, <laughs> or you get shot. Because you do... Yeah. You, 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 Which it's already happened. Oh, yeah, you do something, and... 
they feel threatened and uh, a greenhorn cop or something, you know, just pulls his gun and bang, 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 and you're dead. And all because of what? Because someone said you're scary? That's not good enough. Now look, if, if SB7 teaches you anything, remember back during Hillary's campaign for president when she was talking about, oh, well, if you think somebody's a danger, you should call the cops on them. You should turn them in. You if you see, oh, them. no, 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 no. She said, if you see your, if you've got a neighbor and you see him transporting firearms in and out of their house, you should probably call the police right. and report that. That's what she was saying, that you should just report people what? just if you see them with guns. And that is setting a very, very dangerous precedence for our society because what the government's basically saying is, oh, we want you to be the, the squeaky wheel. We want you to be the grease and the cog of our evil machine. We want you to turn on your brothers and sisters and turn in everybody. We want you to be a snitch. Remember when you were in school, right? And we're talking not like grade school. We're talking like real young school, like elementary school, whatever. And remember being in elementary school and... Some, somebody acted up in class and did something wrong, and the teacher turns around. Who did it? Who did it? Right? Didn't everybody hate the snitch? Didn't you hate the person that turned in somebody for doing something? This is very, very scary in that it's, it's going to open itself up to abuse if it passes. You know, the, 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 the bare bones idea of it to some people might seem sound, I think taking somebody's guns and going through due process second is a very, very bad idea. And the NRA can say all they want that, oh, well, we only, want to, we only support it if it's constitutionally valid. There ain't nothing constitutionally valid about taking somebody's guns. The Second Amendment shall not be infringed. Shall not be infringed. So somebody's either a victim or they're not. And if you haven't created a victim, you haven't, created a, you haven't committed a crime. Okay, so that's very dangerous. And the abuses that this opens up are even more dangerous. But, okay, so let's say that you and your girlfriend get in an argument. Let's, let's face it. You know, you're young. You're 18, 19 years old. You got some long guns. You own, you know, a couple of rifles or whatever, maybe a shotgun. You're 18 years old. You and your girlfriend get in an argument. Well, because she's the, the well-to-do uh, young budding uh, college lady that she is, and she knows a little bit about what's <clears> going on, she goes... Oh, I heard about those red flag laws. Well, why don't I just call the police and say that he beat me and I'll put some some black crap on my eye and, and make it look like I got hid and, and I can... And he's got call, guns. And all I have to do is convince the police that I'm the victim here and people are going to abuse it. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, the, it's just, it's dangerous. And the, that's only one way. There's many uh -huh. other ways that it could be abused. The, the thing that scares me about these bills is just... A lot of times, the like House and Senate bills, they usually be pretty much identical for the most part, but the Senate will change things, the House will change things, because a bill has to go through one House of Congress, and then it has to be uh, amended in the next House of Congress and passed, and then it goes to the President, okay? But right now, like the House bill that was introduced, all right, only a family member can uh, report you, basically, and they give that definition as an individual, a spouse, child, parent, sibling, grandchild, grandparent of the individual, uh, a person with whom the individual shares a child in common. Okay, so it could be okay your your baby girl, daddy, yeah, your your girlfriend or whatever, or your your uh, your boyfriend who lives a town over from you. You don't even live with, but if you had a kid together, then you could report that person. Okay. Um, yeah. What What if you just said something and made him angry, and they decide, well, you know what? I know you're a gun person. I'm just going to screw you and do the, this. The legal guardian of the individual or a person who cohabits or has cohabited with the individual within the previous 12 months. But who's to say that they can't extend that to say coworkers? I mean, because that's yeah, coworkers. That would be common sense, right? What if you have a a, a coworker who's anti-gun? And maybe on every other level, y'all get along, but they know that you're a pro-gun person. Hey man, hey, man, check this out. And th check this gun out that I just bought. It's like, oh, exactly. about guns at work. And they take it as a threat, and it's completely innocent. So you're going to go through this whole to-do, this whole process, and have somebody report you, and you lose your guns. Because they think that just, just because, because they're, they're... Well, I'm not going to use the word, but they're... I mean, it, soft. It says right here, okay, in the House bill. This is we're going by what the House text is. We can only, like I said, we can only extrapolate what's in the House bill. So yeah, unfortunately, we don't really know the actual text yet. So yep. uh, a generalized concern related to any hazards posed by firearms ownership or the use generally shall not constitute 
sufficient basis for the issuance or renewal of an extreme risk protection order under this section. So being a gun owner is not sufficient evidence enough to obviously have an extreme risk protection order placed on you. But who's, I mean, it's just like domestic abuse and stuff like that. Who's to say who's right? This you know, is a they, backdoor portal to gun confiscation is all this I, is. I think too, it's a backdoor portal to gun registration too. Cause if you have your firearms collected, you know, confiscated. Oh, you better believe they're gonna, gonna they're gonna take those and they're gonna put them in evidence. They're gonna have make, model, serial number, your name, everything. You think they're just gonna like shred that evidence once you get your guns back? If you get your guns back, no, they're gonna put that crap in a file somewhere and it's gonna sit and be like, oh man, so and so, oh all those extreme risk protection orders that you guys filed in this state, yeah, we need those. Yep. What are and you kidding? Not only me? that, but I think that there's also some very dangerous. Uh, let's just say when it comes to jurisdictional things that can be taken on, you know, you, there's a lot of places that made, you know, pass these red flag laws. Like you look at what's happening down in Florida, but mm -hmm. if this happens at a federal level and they encourage states to adopt red flag laws, how do you know? Okay, so just because you live in a place with a bunch of anti-gun judges, anti-gun police, so all of a sudden now you're backed into a corner because you want to be pro-gun and you want to exercise your rights and you got a bunch of pansy anti-gun judges, anti-gun cops, anti-gun neighbors. So what? They want to open the door for your neighbor to be able to go, oh, I saw him carry a gun case in the house and, and he, he threatened, he said if my, if my dog pooped on his lawn again that he was going to shoot me and make up some elaborate story. And of course they go before the judge and the judge goes, oh, you're one of them gun owners? Get out of here. You know, and... and it's you what? against the system. Like, there's no checks or balances because it's them against you. Like, these people are wanting to pass this, so they want it to happen. Like, they want you to lose your guns. Only somebody that wants you to lose your guns would want something like this on the books. And the NRA supports it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing is, the, these laws get put in place because everyone's afraid of gun owners. The bottom line. Yeah. People are afraid of gun owners. They want to have an ability to enact on their fear. They want to control those with guns, without guns. Pe people who are but, who people who are scared of you for no reason, for whatever reason, as long as their as their reason is for my feelings. But they want to be able to come to you and have guys with guns come take your guns because they're too pansy to do anything. Right, this themselves. is the way it works. Constituents. I don't like all these guns. Do something. Representatives. We gotta do something. They do something. Okay, these people don't have guns, so who do we get to enforce our laws? People with guns. So you guys with guns go enforce the laws against these people with guns. Because, because the people without guns are scared, scared of the people with guns. The the the, the crazy For thing no reason. The crazy thing to me when, when I look at all these anti gun laws that come up and it just you look at you look at causes of death. Let's just say causes of death. Okay. Oh no, don't don't data now. No no data. Guns are way down here. Whoop, right here. And rifles are like you see a little red you probably can't see it, a little red piece right there. That's rifles. A piece of fuzz. That's rifles. Yeah. And then that little this little clob right here is all firearms like deaths. And we're talking about suicides, homicides, accidental deaths, all that stuff. All right. And abortion. Then, you see this tabletop? This is abortion. You want to talk about causes of death? Yeah. If you didn't see it, general estimation, 41 million lives. Look, guys. Across the world, lost science, to abortion. Science. Guns. Guns. Are you kidding? That, that, this is the problem, though. Right. And, you know, death to smoking, like lung cancer. Okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> heart uh, disease. Heart disease. Obesity. I look. Heart <laughs> Car wrecks. Oh, I can't. I, oh, I can't even do it. Suicide. Now, where's, where's the blood pressure monitor? I Boating mean, accidents. Look, there are so many things that cause more deaths than firearms. But firearms are always the item that's brought to the forefront, and firearms owners are always the ones demonized. Yep. A firearm is a tool of freedom. Why? As well. Why? Because yeah. it's. Scary. It's scary, but look, and I we just, don't have I want to put some. I want to say something in this video before we end it because I really want to just kind of you know talk about SP7 a bit. <sighs> but I, I will 
you know, I want you guys to kind of ponder on this. You know, if you're watching this video and you're furious because you're anti-gun and you think that we're wrong, and you know in your heart that we're wrong, maybe you think we're wrong, whatever, but I, I want you to sort of just kind of think about this a little bit. The gun owners in this country do not want to cause you harm. You know, the majority of gun owners in this country, an overwhelming majority of the people that own firearms in this country are some of the most honest, red-blooded people you'll ever meet. We care deeply about our families. We care deeply about you, perfect strangers. Yeah, when we carry a gun into town and we're going to the grocery store or going to do our thing, guess what? If somebody tries to hurt you, do you think that we're going to stop and give you some uh, 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 questionnaire to fill out and if you're anti-gun, we're not going to protect you? Do, do you think that that just exclusively applies to us? That because we carry a gun that we're only concerned about ourselves and our own selfish tendencies and that we wouldn't risk our life for you? You're dang wrong. And do you think that it only applies to us? Okay, so if you're anti-gun and you hate guns so much, why do you hate them so much that you don't want other people to have them? That doesn't make any sense. When you have the same rights we do, you can go in a shop and buy a gun. If you're anti-gun and you hate guns really bad, go buy a gun and keep it in your house. Don't tell your anti-gun buddies you own a gun. If that makes you feel better, go buy a gun. No one's telling you not to be a gun owner. You can hate guns and still own a gun if you really want to. No one's telling you you can't do that. Just don't tell us what to do. But know that one day when the wolves are at your door, people like us will be there to help you. Right. We don't hate everybody. Just because you own a gun doesn't mean that you have some predetermined notation to want to hurt somebody or to, to cause harm or whatever. Maybe a deer. Yeah, I might go shoot a deer. That's premeditated. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, I, I carefully, I carefully figured out every little nuance as to how I'm going to put the bullet right through the heart of a whitetail. But that's it. And guys, it, people just are not, I, I believe, not emotionally mature enough to understand that someone is entitled to have an opinion that varies from yours. And when that opinion is based in rights, facts, because it's our right to own a gun... So what, because I don't like what you have to say, I'm all of a sudden just going to be like, oh, I, I, um, well, no, you know, I reject you... your reality and substitute my own <laughs> simply because I don't like what you have to say. Whatever you say is what, hate Would I tell you not to say what's on your mind and to, yeah. to be the person you are because I don't like what you say? No. So why should the Second Amendment be the only thing that's treated in that way? Why should we as a society continue to be encouraged by these suits in Washington to turn each other in and to play nanny state for them. Don't play nanny state for them. The burden of proof is on them. If they want them, they can find their own way to do it. Or they can man up and come take them. But you shouldn't turn in each other. And it, it, it's setting a very dangerous precedence when you start talking red flag and you start talking giving people the ability to play nanny state with each other. It's dangerous. I don't agree with it. And anybody who, who agrees with it is my enemy. Mm -hmm. That's just the bottom line. And the NRA for supporting this is dead wrong. I don't know what, you know, they keep saying, oh, well, y'all be playing checkers when we should be playing chess. I don't want to hear it. That, that bullcrap excuse only goes so far. Actions speak louder than words. And I put my faith behind people who support our rights with 110% transparency, honesty, and they use the literal might that they have to fight these things tooth and nail in court. That is the only thing I'm interested in is facts and logic. Oh, wait a minute. I don't care about your feelings. The facts or your facts? The facts. The facts, right? The, the facts. I don't care about your feelings. Science doesn't care about your feelings. Your little emotions and your little, oh, my feels are irrelevant. That document says it quite clear shall not be infringed. Simple. I don't you understand. Think so. <laughs> I don't understand so. how hard that is to, to, to get under your, your hat. Shall not be infringed. Look up the word infringed because in the dictionary. It's, it's the real scary amendment. Doesn't oh matter. It's irrelevant. It is a legal document. It is the law of the land. When it, are these people going to get it through their head? that the Constitution is the ultimate law of the land, and anything that goes against it is not a law. 
Technically. 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 I mean, there's a lot of laws that are on the books that are I mean, the Supreme Court hears like 2% of the cases <laughs> that gets put over their desk. You yeah. mean, you want to talk about taking something all the way to the Supreme Court. And I will say this. The GOA and the FPC are completely willing to buckle up and take stuff like this all the way to the Supreme Court. It takes a long time and it takes a lot of money. But they're willing to do it. They're willing to fight that fight and they're willing to put their money where their mouth is. And the same can't be said for some of the others. We'll just leave you with that. Easy. Guys, thank you very much for watching today's video. I'm not trying to, to, to dole on, on something, you know, negative. The last thing we want to be is negative Nancy's. But guess what? Sometimes, guys, reality just hurts. Reality and truth and facts is a painful pill to swallow. It's a <clears> jagged <throat> pill, and sometimes it's quite uncomfortable. No matter how much water you try to swallow it with, <laughs> it's going to hurt on the way down. <laughs> guys, we have to... Yeah. You, you cannot be emotional when it comes to these types of things. We have to look at the facts. We have to be logical people. We have to use our brains and our hearts. And having heart is different than just simply emo having emotion. Those two are, are two different things. We're talking having the courage to accept the facts and make decisions based on the facts is what separates us from everybody else. When you start having knee-jerk reactions to things and emotionally attacking something with some feel-good piece of legislation, you're only going to put one foot in the grave. And eventually, you're just going to be laying in the bottom of the grave. It's going to be the end of it. Now, the people that we're dealing with are people like Nancy Pelosi, who literally the other day said that she rejects your facts when talking to the director of Homeland Security about border security. I don't accept your facts. Not the facts. Your facts. Oh, your facts aren't my facts. There's two different... No, there's not two sets of facts. There are one set of facts. Facts are What facts. are you talking about? There's fact and there's fiction. Department of Homeland Security's data is fact. Nancy Pelosi's emotional response is fiction. Well, I mean, as, as what are you speak, talking about? As we speak right now... <laughs> what are you talking about? Here in a day or two, I don't know when this video is going to come out, but we <clears> will <throat> do a video on this subject once uh, you know the actual legislation is introduced. Mm. But we are expecting Pelosi to introduce uh, a, basically a reform of national background check system mm. within days. And you know, you have no idea what that universal background checks mm. and all that. It's probably going to be some repackaged bullcrap. It's um, the same version of you know where they where they take a document and go, all right, it's time again, y'all. <laughs> and they blow <laughs> and they blow the dust off and they go, all right, we're going to change the date and we're going to call it the I don't know. We're going to call it the fear mongering <laughs> act. And then there you go. If uh, it's it'll be some repackaged version of what they've already done. But if still. we if we've seen what happened like in states like Washington, you know, and all. Uh, with universal background checks on state level, you can only assume that the federal bills are going to be the same thing. You know, if you want to loan a gun to a family member, guess what? You're going to have to go through an FFL. Uh, oh, if you don't, then you're a felon now. You know, okay. basically. Or oh, gun show loophole. We got to close oh, that. Boy, oh boy. Oh, we're me. we're in for a long ride, it, boys and it girls. It is a long. It's going to be a very painful 2019. Yeah. Uh, Guys, oh, um, absolutely horrible. I want to take a moment to just <clears> tell <throat> you all, thank you. Uh, we really appreciate you watching our videos. We appreciate the support through projects like Man Cans. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a monthly merch box that we sell. If you guys want to pick one up, it helps us, you know, continue to do these things. If you purchase T-shirt. Uh, merch on the website, all of those funds go right back, back into allowing us to, you know, cut these videos and everything. And, and again, SDI, special thanks to them uh, for getting involved in gun gripes and helping us keep the message out to you guys. They're really awesome people and thank them again. Um, have yourselves a great day. We'll see you guys next time. See you guys.